So how much of a jump in the birth rate are we likely to see, and how important is that increase? I'm joined by Mei Fong. She's an author and journalist formerly covering China for The Wall Street Journal. She wrote the book, One Child, The Past and Future of China's Most Radical Experiment. So let's start with that, that number. I was just looking at it again. 12 births every year for every 1,000 women seems incredibly low. It does. I mean, China's had a declining uh, population growth for almost 20 years now. <laughs> And then uh, we pulled some data from the China's National Bureau of Statistics. It shows the age distribution of the population, which is another major concern. We've got a graphic we can show you. In 2004, fewer than 8% of the population was over the age of 65, and about one in five people were either a child or early teenager. Now, in 2014, take a look. The percentage of people over the age of 65 on the rise, the percentage of young people, that's dropping. Uh, from an economic perspective, uh, the numbers really don't add up. This is one of the concerns, isn't it? Yeah, this disparity? Think, yeah, the problem is that now China's uh, rapidly evolving into a too old society. By that, I mean that they have about, um, uh, right now they have about five working adults to support one retiree. In a matter of about 20-something years, they're going to have 1.6 working adults to support one retiree. That's a huge difference. Now, I can take out the stroke of a pen and say we're changing things, but that doesn't necessarily change things. I mean, trying to convince people to have more children, uh, people have kind of gotten into a pattern where they kind of like having one child. How do you change that philosophy with uh, these parents, do you Well, think? that's right. I mean, the one-child policy is almost um, too successful in a way. For past 35 years, um, they everybody's been told the one-child family is the, the ideal. So how do you, you know, evolve and move from that and tell people to have more than one? And a lot of people are saying they don't because it's too expensive. One of the big concerns um, is expense, you know. So as you look forward um, at this collision course, at the aging and perhaps not enough uh, children coming along, what's the answer? What's going to happen, do you think? Well, I don't know that there are very many solutions. One is immigration. Countries have tried that. But China's going to need to import huge numbers, uh, unprecedented. And then, of course, immigration brings a lot of issues, too, with it, you know, how to integrate a population. So that's one issue. Uh, the other one is um, import. Uh, maybe encouraging, you know, I mean, China has been very successful in convincing people that, you know, to have one child, you know, so will it be as successful in convincing people to have more children? That's, a, that would be very interesting. For someone who's studied this, written about it, what, what are some of the things that have jumped out at you that have kind of caught you by surprise as you've studied it? Well, I think the main issue is it's, it's not only just that you suddenly have a, a gone from a nation with a lot of people, the most populous nation, to, you know, not enough people, but it's also the, not just a quantity issue, but a quality issue. Unfortunately, there are not enough women now because a lot of people chose to have sons. So how do you make more uh, 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 babies when you have fewer women, fewer mothers? And not only that, you have old, more older people now. And how do you, who's going to take care of them? Because traditional caretakers were women. <laughs> so right. that's an issue. Correct. Well, very interesting stuff. And it's going to be something we'll definitely keep our eye on. Mei Fong, thanks so much for coming in and visiting with us this evening. Thanks for having me.